every story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello everyone, this is Court TV News on the Hour with Nifemi Oguntoye. President Goodluck Jonathan is about now visiting survivors of West A's bombing of a shopping mall in Abuja. This was after he rushed back to Nigeria from Equatorial Guinea where he was to attend an African Union summit. President Jonathan had traveled just before the bombers hit the popular Emma Plaza, killing at least 22 people. He had earlier planned to return on Friday. Nigeria's largest opposition party, the All Progressives Congress, is heading to court to challenge what are described as constitutional breaches in the run-up to the elections in Ekiti. The party also maintained that the governorship election was neither fair nor credible. Rising from the inaugural meeting of its National Working Committee, APC leadership cited several incidents before actual voting to justify its stance. We are very proud of Governor Fayani for his conduct and comportment before, during, and after the election. And we hail him as a true Democrat and a true spirit of the APC's belief that election is never a do or die affair. Our decision to act to challenge these illegalities in court is not only to ensure that this irresponsible and unconstitutional acts are not repeated in subsequent elections, but also because we have always said that evil thrives when good men do nothing. The People's Democratic Party, meanwhile, has lashed out at the Progressives, the All Progressives Congress, for not accepting the process and outcome of the June 21 governorship election in Nikiti. PDP spokesman Lisa Meitu said this in a statement that it shows the party's preference for anarchy. The party wondered why the APC would kick against the process that produced what it regards as one of the freest, fairest and most credible elections in the country. PDP claimed that APC is now bent on using spurious claims to set the stage for mayhem in Ikiti. The Ekiti State Governor-elect Ayodele Fayoshe says the concession of incumbent Governor Kaode Fayami to defeat was a propaganda stunt aimed at eliciting public sympathy. Fayoshe admitted that although Fayami at the weekend conceded publicly and congratulated him, the governor had not picked calls from him since then. Fayoshe has well accused Fayami of promising to create employment before he leaves in order to cause problem for the incoming government. He recalled that his predecessor in 2003, Nia Adibayo, also considered defeat but went ahead to conduct a massive job recruitment exercise with only six months remaining in his tenure. Fayoshe appealed to APC not to play propaganda with sensitive issues and commended the incumbent governor for the bold step taken in considering defeat even though it was meant to induce public sympathy. Meanwhile, winner of the June 21 governorship election in Ekiti, Ayodele Fayoshe, has been presented with a certificate of return. The presentation took place at the INEC premises in Ado Ekiti, where the governor-elect promises better governors for the citizenry. The attracted supporters of the governor-elect who thronged the INEC headquarters in jubilation. The resident electoral commissioner says the success of the poll was possible due to the unalloyed support the commission received from Ekiti people, adding that the Ekiti experience is a good omen for the 2015 general elections. If this is realizable in Ekiti state, then we are optimistic that comes 2015, the commission will register more credible and acceptable poll. Once more, we are very grateful. In his acceptance speech, Fayashi thanked his party supporters 
and the people of Ekiti for their steadfastness and promised to make the government grassroots based, which will involve everyone in the state. To do any capital flights. We are going to do exactly what will profit the common man of this state. And we continue to eat poorly with them. We continue to drink and go to deal with them. Basking in the euphoria of his victory, Fayoshi said the PDP is ready to conquer the Southwest in subsequent elections. God has to pay by this certificate. Don't need to the leader of the Southwest Nigeria. I am going to go down from here to begin to energize our people from one, one state to another until we take over take, take back our reality. The legal documentation of Fayoshi's election as the governor-elect of Ikiti State might spur political consultations and planning towards the governance of Ikiti State. Rashid Rashid, Kor TV News, Ado Ikiti. Away from Ekiti now, there was pandemonium at the University of Jaws in Plateau State on Thursday as lecturers and students fled the campus following the sight of an alleged suicide bomber. Court even is gathered that the suspect was apprehended by the students as it tried to enter the premises. The alarm raised by the students sent everyone scampering for safety. However, some students summoned up courage to capture the alleged bomber, who was almost beaten to a pop before he was rescued by the school security. The mystery surrounding the explosion at Creek Road in Apapa has remained unraveled. No explanation has emerged on the course of the blast which claims an unspecified number of lives. Browns in Uwana was at the scene of the blast and here's the report. Business owners, port users and freight forwarders are usually engaged in businesses here in a normal day. But the explosion which occurred at night made it impossible. The resultant is the beefing up of security leading to traffic jam. The explosion left a fuel tanker a 40 feet container and a car damaged beyond recognition. It has also led to the death of unspecified number of people with blood stains on the ground. So my witnesses say the blast is beyond an accident. The fact that we are witnessing this one in Lagos is very glaring, even to a layman, even to somebody that is very blind. You know, this is not a tanker or gas explosion as claimed by the you know, Lagos State Police, com Police Commissioner, because I read it on my Twitter that uh, it was a gas explosion and, you know, all blah, blah, blah. Everybody can see. Because if it was a gas explosion, you can see the truck here. Definitely it would have been blown off. You can see the buildings, about four, five buildings were involved in this. It was a massive one. It was a massive explosion. I mean, the carcass of the car, right in the middle of the road, there was a, a, a container that was a 40-foot container on top of a truck. It was, com it was severely dented. And uh, even opposite the, 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 the very scene was the former Enterprise, Enterprise Bank. The, 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 the whole front of the place was, was damaged. So, I mean, it was, it was a massive explosion. Spokesman of National Emergency Management Agency, Ibrahim Fariloye, says the agency's personnel were barred from the scene by police saying the issue is beyond their jurisdiction. This is a scene of an explosion that took place at about 9.45 p.m. on Wednesday night at Creek Road, Apapa. Initial reports suggest that it was a tanker explosion, but what we can see here suggests otherwise. It is a call for all Lagosians to be more vigilant. Brownson Uwana, Core TV News, Lagos. The Police Service Commission has in the last one year approved the dismissal of nine senior police officers. Commission Chairman Mike Murray did a Okiro disclosed this at a briefing marking his one year in office. He revealed that 99 officers faced disciplinary action within the same period. Also, the Commission considered and approved the total of 99 disciplinary cases with punishments ranging from dismissals to suspensions. There's also a table there giving you a breakdown of the 99 people who were disciplined. 
equally two of the dismissed senior police officers are to be prosecuted. Five officers reduced in rank were subscribed for the fire and the loss, while one of the officers reduced in rank would also forfeit 37 days' pay. The Commission has rece received a total of 335 appeals through petitions, body of police misconduct that are currently being processed. Stories from Pakistan is next, coming up shortly after this break. TV News, expanding your view. Welcome back. Pakistan and health officials are rushing to vaccinate hundreds of thousands of children against polio amid fears that a civilian exodus from a tribal area where the virus is rampant could spread the disease across the country. Nearly half a million people have fled the military operation against the Taliban strongholds in North Waziristan, a hotspot for the crippling disease in Pakistan. Children in the tribal district have not been vaccinated since Taliban and local warlords banned health teams from giving out drops in June 2012. Tens of thousands of families have fled to the town of Banu, close to North Waziristan, while hundreds more have moved further afield to Laki Makwat Karak and Dera Ismail Khan towns since the offensive began in Mijian. More than 50 cases of polio have been detected so far this year in militant invested North Waziristan out of 82 cases across the country and 103 worldwide. A World Health Organization official in Banu says the campaign would continue one day a week during the fasting month of Ramadan, which begins at the weekend. Pakistan is one of the only three countries along with Afghanistan and Nigeria, where polio remains endemic and efforts to eradicate it have been badly hit by rumors about the vaccine. And that wraps it on Court TV News. These are the journals again at the top of the hour for more updates. I am Nifemi Ogun Toye. Thanks for being there.